Pastora.
This is the three-dimensional visualization of this structure. So what that previous, uh, this concrete floor or the impervious floor looks like is this. So this is the three-dimensional visualization of the concrete floor or the impervious floor. So on the riverbed, first of all, provide this type of a floor. Okay. So this floor is designed before actually providing it in the field. The thickness, which is shown at various points in the varying thickness, that means in the middle it is more uh, thicker and on the downstream side of it, you see that the thickness is reducing further downstream, it is reducing further and at the end and in the upstream side, we have the least thicknesses. So, why and how these thicknesses are provided, they will be calculating again in this uh, seepage theories, in the sequent lectures. This floor is designed and it is provided on the riverbed. Above this concrete floor, we provide this weir wall. Okay. And on top of this weir wall, we provide the crest shutter. So this is the 3D visualization of how the structure would look like. Okay. So these are the sheet piles. Sheet piles are running. Uh, in the previous slide, you have seen in the form of lines only, and I told you that these uh, uh, sheet piles are running in perpendicular to the screen. So now it is very clear that why they are known as, why they are called as sheet piles, because they are in the form of sheet. And they are called piles because they are driven very deep into the river bed. So they are not a single uh, ordinary piles only, they are piles in the form of a sheet. So that's why it is called a sheet pile. So on the upstream side of the, uh, this impervious floor, this sheet pile, it is called upstream sheet pile and which is provided on the downstream end of this concrete floor or the impervious floor, that is called the downstream sheet pile. So simple naming is there. Now on both of the sides, what you see is on the upstream side, block protection and on the downstream side, inverted filter. So till now we have uh, discussed the functions of every component till now. So we are left with this launching apron. Okay, so launching apron on both of the sides. We have to discuss how it functions. So this is the pond level. Okay, up to top of this crest shutter, what you see is water is heading up, up to the top of this crest. Okay, so when water is heading up up to this pond level, up to this pond level. So there is no water flowing to the downstream side. Or we can assume that very little water is coming 
from the upstream side, which is there at present in the river. And because the water is only heading up up to this top of the pond level, we are diverting this water to the off-taking channels also. So we are not allowing any water to go to the downstream side. Okay. In that particular case, these launching aprons, they stay intact. So these two launching aprons, so now you are seeing in the red uh, rectangular enclosure, so these launching aprons, they stay intact as we have provided. Okay, But what happens when flood comes? When more water is coming from the upstream side and it is much more than what is diverted into the canals, if you divert the water into the canals, so some part of the flood water will be diverted, but the flood water is much more than the diversion capacity of the canals. So most of the water will be going to the downstream side. So how that water will be going to the downstream side and what will happen to this pond level? So now the water will not be maintained at this pond level, rather it will be overflowing over this structure, over this uh, weir, over this crest shutter. And now this pond level has gone because water is not up to the pond level and now the water level is called high flood level because it is the water level due to flood. And highest flood level or HFL is when we uh, get the highest level of the discharge in the river for which we have designed this structure. Okay. So let us assume that highest flood discharge has come. In that case, whatever will be the level of water on the upstream side, that will be called HFL on the upstream side. Okay. Similarly, this HFL on the downstream side will also be maintained during this high, uh, this, uh, high flood. So when the flood will be there, so this water level will also be maintained, uh, will be at its maximum level. So it, is, it will be called downstream HFL or the highest flood level. In this particular circumstance, when the water is coming on, a uh, lot of water is coming from the upstream side and a lot of water is going to the downstream side also. In that case, this water will have a scouring action on the riverbed. And what happens to this launching apron? Because that riverbed will be going down. If on the both of these sides, if the riverbed is going down, yeah. it will endanger this structure also that will endanger the structure also. So how this launching apron is going to protect us, see carefully these launching apron, what happens to it. So as the riverbed goes down, these launching aprons, they, because they are loose stones only, so they launch themselves in this uh, slopey fashion. And now they are not called the launching apron, rather they are known as launched apron because they have launched themselves in the desired position. So this is a stone uh, pitching, you can say the stone layer here, which protects the uh, structure, uh, which protects this particular soil in this area to get scoured out because of the scouring action of the flowing. So this slopey portion of the stone it provides protection to this entire structure. So the structure, uh, the structure is not damaged. It protects the structure. When the flood wave passes and the normal flow conditions prevail again, so this will not come back. It will be there, but it will keep protecting. Now, when the normal conditions will prevail, this water level, uh, sorry, this bed level may start building up again because of the deposition of the sediment that comes from the upstream side. But this launched apron will remain in the position of the launched apron only and it will keep protecting. Because the river bed is loose, unconsolidated and uh, cohesionless uh, material, so these loose stones can go further deeper also and the exact layer may not be maintained in uh, future also. So we keep on adding more and more stones over here so that in case of the floods, the launching apron keeps its function on and it keeps protecting the entire structure. So here we have uh, one uh, text line also. That after the river covers out the bed, the launching apron launches itself 
to provide a protective armor layer at the slope of two horizontal to one vertical, and is called launched apron. Okay, so the slope of this particular launched apron is two horizontal to one vertical. That means whatever is the depth of uh, depth up to which the riverbed has covered out. So twice that depth, this horizontal length will be there. So it will be sloping in the uh, with this slope, two horizontal to one vertical. So we have to design this launched apron or the launching apron so that in eventuality of the flood, it will launch itself into this loop. Okay, I think up to this point it is uh, very clear to you. So here, let us uh, discuss something more about the launching apron. So the scarred uh, the scar protection provided for some components of hydraulic structure in the form of stack of loosely packed stones. So it is a stack of loosely packed stones. So here these stones are not joined together in the form of stone masonry. They are not joined with the mortar. They are loosely placed stones only. Okay. So it provides a scow protection to some components of the hydraulic structure. Here it is providing the safety to this sheet piles and this floor only. But actually, when we provide the scour safety to some component, ultimately it is meant that the entire structure is secured. So that safety is extended to the entire structure. So it provides the protection to the entire structure. So it provides, uh, it is provided in the form of stack of loosely packed stone on upstream and downstream end of the structure. So we have discussed it that on both of the sides, we have provided these launching apparatus. If you zoom in this portion and see it in the bigger uh, view, so this is the view of the downstream protection. Similar will be the case with the upstream protection. So how to provide, how to design this launching apron. See, this is the portion. It is the launching apron as laid. This is how we provide the launching apron. Okay. We provide the launching apron in this fashion. Some thickness is provided and some length is provided. And perpendicular to the screen, it will have the length equal to the uh, total width of the channel. Okay, so that will be discussing later on. Uh, if you, uh, if the water is flowing above this up to the HFL, so what will happen? The water, because above this floor, the water is up to this HFL. Now I have removed this shading. The depth of the water which is flowing above this launching apron, up to this HFL, that is, let us say it is Y. Okay, so depth of flow is capital Y. So Lacey's regime's cover depth, if you calculate that how deep this river bed can go, how deep this river bed can go. So for that, Lacey has suggested this cover equation 1.35 Q by F, sorry, Q square by F raised to power 1 by 3. Okay. And it is measured from the HFL. So this R is the regime's cover depth below this HFL. That means this R value is measured from this HFL in the downward direction. If the, uh, let us say, the river bed will be coming up to this level, from this level to this HFL, this entire will be R. Okay. So this with this equation, you can calculate the regime's cover depth. Here, small q is the discharge intensity. Discharge intensity, I'll be explaining it later also, but as, as you know in the Fluid mechanics also. Discharge intensity means the discharge passing through a one meter width of the channel. Not the entire width. From the entire width, the total discharge capital Q passes. But from one meter width of the channel, how much discharge passes? That is small q. Okay. And this F is silt factor. And it is determined or it is calculated by this formula 1.76 under the root D50. And D50 is the median particle size of the river bed material. Okay. So 50% of the particles uh, are finer than this size and 50% of the particles are coarser than this size. So that particular size is called D50. So if that size is determined with the help of uh, sieve analysis, then square root of that uh, D50 size multiplied by 1.76, that will give you 
the value of silt vector f and that f is to be used over here so we will work out the value of r so this is the uh, value which is suggested by lacy but we have to multiply this value of r by some safety factor so that safety factor x ranges from 1.25 to 2 okay so 1.25 to 2 so how this uh, factor varies from 1.25 to 2 it is recommended uh, for different situations different value of x is recommended so in the sequence slides we'll be discussing that also so x times r is the uh, total power depth below hfl so if you subtract this y okay so that will be maximum possible power depth below floor level because this r or x times r that is measured below this hfl from this how much deep will be the river bed okay from this floor level if you want to calculate you have to subtract this y from this so xr minus y is the depth of uh, scour below the floor so from the floor level how deep you have to go that is capital d okay so how this y is determined hfl minus floor level so it is very simple high flood level if this level is given to you floor level is given to you so difference of these two levels will give you the flow depth so this is d now so this d we have divided over here that what uh, bed level will go this much deep okay up to this level so this is the probable deepest scour level in the eventuality of the flood when the design flood will come according to lacy's regime theory so it will have the tendency to move up to this level so this bed level will go at the most up to this level not beyond that okay under no circumstances the bed level of the river will go below this okay so this is the probable deepest scour level okay if deepest scour level is there then this depth d is same as here and if you see a point over here which is at a 2d distance from this initial level of this launching apron because it has to launch itself at a slope of two horizontal to one vertical so twice d here and one d over here so this will be the slope like this okay so this launching apron because this launching apron is launching apron as late this is what right but in case of discovering in the case of flood it will launch itself into this position so this is the launched apron so launched apron will be of this shape and if you see this top line it is up to this deepest scour level and this horizontal dimension is twice d and this vertical dimension is d so in this particular triangle in this particular triangle we will be doing some calculation so uh, this launching apron is supposed to maintain its thickness 1 meter so that is also in the guidelines that at least 1 meter thick launched apron should be there and if this is 1 meter so we will be using this 1 meter in the calculation of the quantity of stone so but if you see this triangle height is b base is 2d then this dimension how long it will be can you calculate it
design of the launching apron and all the components are over how a wear gets failed what are various causes of failure of a wear so this table summarizes everything so there are four different causes of failure one is piping then uplift then suction and scour so out of these four first two piping and uplift they are caused by the subsurface flow the water which is flowing through the pore structure of the soil or under the bed that means inside the soil uh, bed soil of the river that flow is causing the failure uplift we have discussed in detail uh, as of now so piping also is something that is uh, happening in the interior of the bed only so to prevent this piping we provide the uh, inverted filter also okay. so and suction and scouring they are caused by the water which is flowing on the upper side that is the surface flow which is flowing above this wheel okay so first two causes are of subsurface flow type and further two causes are due to the surface flow okay so what are their effects due to piping if it is initiated once piping failure is initiated once if it gets started it progresses very rapidly okay and it is it cannot be stopped it cannot be stopped so once the piping failure is initiated you see that the failure has started the piping failure has just begun it is very very difficult to stop this progression of this failure you cannot prevent the overall failure of the structure okay so uh, i am not discussing it in much detail over here because uplift pressure and piping both of these things are to be discussed in the uh, cpg theory chapter and we will be designing our impervious floor on the basis of these two things <laughs> okay so what we can do to prevent this is by providing sufficiently long impervious floor so it is related to the impervious floor with upstream and downstream sheet piles again i told you that this sheet piles along with this impervious floor together we will be designing and studying it in the next chapter for uh, uplift pressure it the impervious impervious floor is lifted upwards causing cracks so this we have discussed today and how to prevent it by providing sufficiently long impervious floor again sufficiently long impervious floor is good for a resistance against the piping also and it is good for resistance or you can say uh, effectiveness against the uplift pressure also so here something is else is added also by providing sufficiently long impervious floor with sufficient thickness at various points so we have seen that impervious floor is uh, having uh, different thickness at different points so sufficient thickness at various points should be provided and upstream and downstream sheet piles are also there so all these things along with sufficiently thickness sufficient thickness at various points so that also is required uh, for uh, resistance against the uplift pressure so in general so these two failures can be resisted or can be prevented by designing this impervious floor properly okay so that is about of course the topic of the next chapter in the suction what happens is uh, if you just imagine the water flowing from the spillway of a dam from top of the dam the water is sliding down as it moves down it slides down its velocity keeps increasing okay and all of us know that more the velocity lesser will be the pressure okay so the pressure inside that water will keep on reducing as its velocity keeps on increasing so when the velocity increases to a, such a great extent that the pressure becomes lower than the atmospheric pressure then in that particular case the concrete structure or the floor or the uh, glacis or the spillway on which the water is sliding the water will have a suction effect on that floor also and any loose aggregate or any portion loose portion of the uh, floor or the concrete surface that will be sucked out okay. 
so concrete surface of the impervious floor or sloping glacis is worn out because of this suction effect of this high velocity water jets okay how to prevent it additional thickness of the floor is provided okay so whatever is the design thickness we have to provide more thickness than that so that some bearing out of the uh, surface can be accommodated and it can also be provided uh, the safety can be provided by the concrete floor of single mass instead of masonry layers if the uh, floor is provided in the form of masonry layers in that case the different layers have their different strength their strength will not be uniform throughout so different layers can be removed easily protection will be more effective so that uh, floor will be damaged very soon so instead of providing the uh, masonry layers we can provide the single concrete floor as a single mass so these are the remedies for preventing suction uh, failure due to suction the last one is covering and we know what is covering the sediment on which the structure is built it is removed because of this cover and what is the effect further it causes the settlement and cracks in the structures you can very well uh, understand that if the subsoil is not there or if it has gone deeper then the structure cannot stand in air it will also settle down further and settling down will be different and in different portion of the structure so cracks may appear so they are called the differential settlement will be there so cracks due to differential settlement may appear in the structure that will cause the complete failure of the structure so upstream and downstream sheet piles should be deeper than the calculated cover level so that the soil below the structure is not removed out and by providing suitable length and thickness of the launching apron so we have discussed in the previous slides that how the launching apron functions and how it prevents uh the damage you do discovering that also we have seen so providing suitable length and thickness of the launching apron will also help against this covering phenomenon